It's big game time now in Group B as we get ready to go to the decider match. It's going to be an interesting one. Snoot takes on Kung Fu Panda in a match that sees one of them going through to the playoffs. Joining me on the desk is In Control and Rotterdam. This should be a good one. Uh, absolutely, especially because Gong Fu had a really good run as well in Season 2. This is not the first time he's here. In Season 2 he had perhaps even a tougher group and he came even closer to advancing. And then of course there is Snoot who we all hold very highly, but for some reason in WCS it's just not really coming together yet, so it really has to happen. Yeah, right he here. needs to. He had a good Season 1, unfortunately couldn't make it in Season 2, but he's back in Season 3. Let's check in with the bracket to see exactly where we are if you're just tuning in. We're on a day number three here at the World Championship Series at the Season Finals. The last day before moving on to the playoffs and we're in the middle of Group B with Group C and D yet to come. Snoot takes on Kung Fu Panda as mentioned in the decider match, Jeff. A cool series. Yeah, there's a lot at stake. I mean, we keep talking about BlizzCon with Snoot, obviously, but I kind of actually want to see how Snoot handles pressure as well. I think one of the kind of the scuttlebutt, if you will, at the analysis desk and the casters over there was that Snoot played uncharacteristically kind of aggressive and a little bit more all in than we've ever seen Snoot before. Kind of psychoanalyzing that a little bit, saying he's off his uh, game. He's, 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 he's doubting himself. He's doubting kind of his core mechanics and what he does, which is to be very patient, kind of wait out his opponent. And uh, he's, he's different. So, you know, it's a new day. Maybe he went back and reanalyzed himself and we'll see a different Snoot, but that's kind of a concern. Uh, with Snoot now looking on the horizon of a chance of a potential place mm -hmm. at the Global Finals, if he is to be first place at this tournament, he needs to perform here, not just because of that, but there isn't that much left for StarCraft this year. This is it for every player that's eliminated here. What is there really left? Yeah, of course, last year he got incredibly close to making it to BlizzCon, and this year he was never that close. In the start of the year it looked alright, you know, the quarterfinals of Season 1 is not bad, of course, but with Snoot you just kind of expected a little more. We didn't expect him to lose to Bunny back then. Maybe a month later we kind of expected that, because then Bunny was really outperforming Snoot for a small bit, but on that moment Snoot was the favorite in that quarterfinal, and it just didn't happen, and it was like, well, we got Season 2, you know, Snoot is going to have that magical run of semi-finals or finals, yep. but Season 2 it wasn't it at all. He lost in the round of 32, so it really has to happen here. But, Jeff, just to go back to what you just said, I spoke a little bit with Jens, and he actually seemed very relaxed this morning. He said, I feel so much better than I did two days ago. I didn't really ask why he wasn't feeling on it, but that may have explained some of his uncharacteristic, very aggressive play. He's like, no, he's like, I'm actually feeling really good. And he was smiley and relaxed, so... I mean, when Snoot's playing well, he plays well. Yeah. I mean, you look at when he played in Shenzhen and look at the group that he went into in the round of 16 there, Roddy. He came out on top and no one expected that. No, that, that was that was disgusting. I mean, his PVC can be ridiculously good. But, you know, it's really weird how that works with CVP, I should say. Sometimes you can do extremely well against those world-class Protosses, but then the Protosses a tier below, they just play so different that everything you do against those gods, you know, the classics, the reigns, that doesn't necessarily always apply when you go up against a European Protoss. I know that sounds very weird and it sounds like it doesn't make sense. It's just kind of the way that StarCraft works. Well, let's uh, change our focus now and switch into to Kung Fu Panda here. He's played one Zerg game today, he played a, a Zerg game a few days back as well. He comes into this one and you've just watched his game against Sen and it wasn't a poor performance. No, it was not. It was, it was actually quite impressive. I thought he had a couple of weird things but then was able to actually recover quite nicely. Like having his third cancelled on that, that second game was actually a really scary, bad situation but Sen was being so darn greedy, and Gung Fu Banda kind of dotted all his I's, crossed his T's, saw that, and, and was able to capitalize. And it's kind of a weird thing to say, because for a lot of hardcore fans, I think they would look at that situation and be like, what, he A-moved and that was it? Well, kind of. <laughs> but he actually dodged a major bullet. He was pre-immortals. He was facing Ultras off a of four-base economy. Like, it could have actually been really bad but he was able to pounce when he needed to. Yeah, I totally agree. Game one was very solid. We don't have to uh, add too much to that. The game on Coda was good, was great. That's the way you want to play PvZ. The game on Cactus, in the end, it all came together. But normally when you go up against Snoot, and Snoot is at on point, if you lose your third base while you march across the map and then you get deflected by two spine crawlers, like, yeah. that was not a good move. Uh, yeah. And against someone like Snoot, you can't get away with that. Snoot will capitalize on a mistake like that. One thing that Kung Fu Panda shares with a lot of the new talent and the younger players that we have in the World Championship Series 
is he has a lot of confidence yeah. and it doesn't really matter who he goes up against it's been shared by Lilbo it's been shared by Marine Lord and Kung Fu Panda is one of the players over the last couple of seasons who smiles he has fun he doesn't care who he plays against he feels no pressure this is definitely a huge advantage coming in against Snoot for sure but I actually spoke a little bit with him this morning as well just coincidence man like ran into yeah. the guy at breakfast so we shared the table I was talking a little bit he's like yeah I'm not too worried about Sen he's like but I'm much more worried about Snoot so he is feeling it and he knows that <laughs> you know Snoot is a better CVP player than Sen is all right well Let's take a look at the map vetoes then. The players have now chosen where they want to go, where they want to play for the next series. It's going to be Coda. Wow. Dash and Terminal squeezes in, and we've very, very, very rarely seen Dash and Terminal. And yeah. then at Terraform. Yeah, and it's a little bit weird. Snoot actually picked it as well, which, okay, you know, there's backdoors around that natural. There's gold base, which is always good for Zerg. But it's also a map where things get a little bit weird, and, and it's also a 1v1 map. And that's a couple of things that do play towards... I don't necessarily want to say Gung Fu Banda's favor, but he is a guy who famously proxy-gated Jadong in the round of 32, I believe it was. Like, he's capable of taking pretty big risks, whereas Snoot's the guy who's like, Hey, young buck, you, you ease up over there. Like, I need to go to BlizzCon, and I need to certainly get to the <laughs> round of eight. Yeah, Dash Terminal definitely stands out here. Coda, we've spoken too much already about it, I think. And Terraform is a very straightforward last map. Dash Terminal, this is a map when, I think the last time I was casting with you were on the desk, we were like, man, what is he going to do? This is so cool. So no, crazy. Like, and they just and played was, completely straight up. Yeah, there was like Nexus <laughs> first, no scout. It's like, you would have died against like seven different yeah. openings right now. So that is definitely an interesting map. If I was Snood, you know, I'd play yeah. very safe in that map. Just pull first, then hatch, and then just take it from there. You make sure you won't die against anything super stupid. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask you, stylistically, what are we uh, expecting from both these players? You kind of answered it a little bit there with Snoot kind of playing a defensive overall game. Is that what we're expecting him throughout the series? And then what do you expect from Kung Fu? Definitely on Dash and Terminal, because that's just a great map overall for Zerg. You can go for a couple of aggressive builds, like even opening up with any sort of early speed. I think it's great enough because it makes it hard for Protoss to go up to two bases. But for instance, on a map like Koda, there we could see something very different from Snoot. Maybe just to try to throw off that standard Sentry Blink Stalker, which I'm expecting mm. on that map. So. Yeah, Snoot is the type of guy that makes a lot of units in a phase in a game where you don't expect it, so you can push the Protoss back and then take an advantage from there and macro up behind it. Yeah. So it's going to be kind of tricky. I think map 1 and map 3 is going to be very hard to figure Snoot out, whether he goes ultra greedy or pretty aggressive. Map number 2 should be very safe and solid Snoot. Okay, uh, before we go to the predictions here in Control, do you reckon uh, complacency is even a word to be discussed here on, on the, uh, the stage for these two? Complacency? Yeah. In what, in what regard? And Snoot looking at this series. I know everyone's going to be looking at him as the favorite. Is he going to be that word coming in? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't think he can. I honestly don't. Like, it, it, maybe in day one he can have that kind of swagger. But right now, these are all feral cats backed in a corner, man. Like, Gung Fu Banda okay. is a guy that a lot of people might look past. But he's still Protoss. It's still PVZ where a one bad scout and all of a sudden there's eight gateways worth of units bearing down on you and Snoot could be out. It's a best of three which is also a short series. So no, right. I don't think he's complacent. I think he's nervous and he's ready to go. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take a look at the predictions. As always, we've been following them and let's see where we've chosen to go this time. We have a two to six in favor in Snoot from everyone and the people that have chosen Kung Fu Panda, Nathanius and Pig. Nathanius, Nathanius is in the lead, by the I way, know. so if he messes this up... Him but leaning out a little bit there with an interesting pick. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's been in the lead, but today's been a rocky day, I believe. I think he had two wrong already, right? Or at least one. Oh, so. I hope he's dropping off. So he's not flawless. We're going to have to check in. Uh, after yeah. the series before the next one, we will check in with where everyone is. Um, but uh, interesting I pick there. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think this was kind of to be expected. Like, Snoot is the favorite. But he's also not an 8-0 and zero favorite. Like, if yeah. Gong Fu wins this, that's not the biggest upset we've seen this year or even in this season. Yeah, we've seen bigger upsets. Uh, but Snoot, you know, normally with the status, the history, and with what's on the line, yeah. he's the favorite. It's a lot on the line. Thank you very much, gentlemen. As Snoot tries to play to be first to go to the Global Finals. A massive moment here in the round of 16. Can he get through to the playoffs? It's Norway versus Germany as we get ready for another elimination match. Todd. That's what makes it all so exciting. Everyone's life is on the line now. Absolutely. And uh, as a Protoss, I have to say, and as a huge Snoot fan and friend as well, this one is a special one for me because I feel like whoever wins or loses, I'm going to be sad but happy at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good match. You know, I've been a big Snoot fan following it, of course. Um, you know, my magical, you know, my Protoss Oracle tells me that Gung Fu Bandit will win with my prediction, but you can't be disappointed with whoever moves on in this series. They've, uh, they both put up such great games. 
And we are getting ready to go into this as we load into Coda to kick this series off. Hopefully you've all been having a wonderful day watching the World Championship Series Premier League. But it is time to find out which one of these players will escape this group in this Protoss versus Zerg. Getting out of the round of 16, we'll find out now as we have in the top left position the blue Zerg player from Norway representing Team Liquid, he Snoot. And his opponent in the southeast position, we have the German Protoss, he is Kung Fu Benda. These two, you know, practicing on the same server, they're definitely gonna know a lot about each other, but I feel like Snoot, as of late, he's really, I don't know how to say it, changed a little bit. He's a lot happier in general when you see him outside of games, and I feel like it definitely shows when he's playing as well. You know, he had a little bit of a slump at some points. His results weren't as good as some of, uh, of, of what some of the people expected, which is absolute top-notch results as one of the top non-Korean players. He talked about retirement and all that, and then since this, he's worked really hard to get back, I guess, uh, in his old form. And it's it's really shown in some of his last few series. So now going, going up against uh, a Kung Fu Panda he's going to be very familiar with, and I don't feel that has too many builds at his disposal. I feel like Snoots might be a, a, a huge favorite, per personally. Yeah, following these guys has been so interesting this year. Like, Kung Fu Band has put up a couple of good performances here and there, you know, making it through, qualifying for Premier League for WCS a few times, had a couple really good runs in some other online tournaments. I think back to, you know, Frag Bite Masters towards the end of last year, and, the, and even getting as far in this year, but both of these guys, when you compare them to other Europeans, as, an, as someone outside looking in, the European scene has just gone through so much of an overhaul in the last year. Because you came into 2015, you're looking at guys like Snoot, you're looking at guys like Bunny to lead the way, and suddenly now you have the big, you know, the French connection basically hooking up with guys like Marine Lord, Lil Bo, just wrecking face left and right, and even Fire Cake. And these are the players that people are expecting to do well, but they're kind of starting to be, you know, not really, you, it's hard to tell if they're still the top Europeans. Yeah, it's there's definitely been a few changes, and it's also very up in the air uh, to, I guess, even have a chat about who's doing better right now. Uh, for example, even between these two. So, personally, I feel like Snoot has come a long way since uh, his defeatist days that he had not too long ago, where he wasn't doing that well in tournaments and seemed really depressed every time he, uh, I guess, bombed out of a tournament. He really started playing very, very well, I think, in my opinion, here once again. Yeah. And uh, he's going to need that here against the Kung Fu Panda, who showed, definitely showed some pretty good things uh, in his previous match against Sen. Yeah, I guess this is the part where I'd, I'd, I'd be most curious, Todd, you know, having watched the last series that took place between Kung Fu Panda and Sen, is there anything that really stands out that you think this won't work against Snoot, or Snoot's really good against this? It seemed like Kung Fu Panda, he really likes to go up to three bases with sentries and blink stalkers, and then he drops down the Temple Archive very quickly to go into Storm. And then from there, he scouts and he decides which timing it is that he's going to go for. So now since he saw that Sen was rushing towards Ultras very quickly and didn't have that many units, he hits in both games this one timing that kind of kills Sen pretty much immediately, uh, even with the War Prism doing a bunch of damage in there. So I okay. think if he does that against Snoot, Snoot is going to be a lot better prepared than Sen was, and Snoot plays very different in general. He's not going to play, I think, with melee upgrades and with Zerglings into Ultras. Usually Snoot, you see more Hydralisks being his cup of tea, he gets a Roach Warren now, but this is just, I think, for safety. And Snoot, he's, he's got a few good builds to his arsenal. He's, uh, he's got this one build, you know, where he goes into a few Mutas and then does a follow-up massive Hydralisk attack that uh, he's... I've seen him do a few times and that he's done pretty well with still six roaches here. Yeah, I'm, I was going to ask you, what, how exactly does this work out? Because he doesn't seem to have knowledge of the Stargate and we could have an Oracle come up. There's obviously no Spore Crawlers in play. Is he just going to try to get aggressive anticipating a fast third or why would he do this? I think maybe he saw that the gateways at the wall started a little bit late. So maybe he got a little bit worried that there might be other gateways in the main and that this is something like a five gate. And since he didn't have Overlord sound on the map to really spot very well uh, if there was some kind of pylon going up. He just kind of gambled that this might be aggression, but now he, yeah. he must be realizing that this is not, and he's moving across the map to try and do some of damage of his own here. Snoot, a very important characteristic of his play is that he doesn't sacrifice overlords to scouts. He usually gets blind spores. 
And it's so interesting, he's so low on worker count compared to his opponent. And these roaches are really looking to do a lot as they make their way up the ramp they towards to. the natural. They need to. Right now the worker count is 24 drones to 43 probes. If Kung Fu Panda defends this properly, he's going to be in a great position, but his gate quiz are going to be unpowered. Yeah, he's moving in. So the Oracle comes out. It's going to be used defensively to try to help against this. There's a few force fields remaining for Kung Fu Panda, but you're right. Two of his gateways are offline. He's trying to Chrono Boost out of Void Ray to help defend. There's no Photon Cannon. He's getting to work on the rocks as well, but the Oracle is out of energy. No more attacks. Roach is going to go up into the main base, trying to pick off Weakened Sentry. He gets one of them, and now making his way to the probe line. Wow. So Snoot, behind this, is just pumping out tons and tons of drones. He wants to create an advantage for himself, and then just skyrocket off that economic. I think Snooty had anticipated that Kung Fu Panda doesn't go for Mothership Core quickly and that he likes to play a little bit greedy sometimes with his target. So he went for this to try and do a lot of damage. And now he's already been able to do a little bit with seven probes. Not quite sure it's enough. I don't think so personally. I think he ideally would have liked to be able to do more. He has seven probes is nice, but behind this we have 45 drones to 36 probes. If Kung Fu Panda doesn't lose anymore, it's going to be okay, but he's still being Attacked in places. Yeah, in the main, he's not paying wow, attention to the roaches in the main. Yeah, he still has these zerglings in the natural as well, just being as annoying as possible, forcing out this zealot, even killing it while the probes get to work. So 12 workers lost in the uh, last little bit here, and now Snoot finds himself ahead. He didn't get ready though for this oracle. The spore's not gonna finish on time. There's no oh. queen there, and now he's gonna be the revenge here of the oracle. Yeah, okay, so a little bit of counter damage being inflicted here by Gung Fu Banda, and as far as everything else goes, there's still no lair up for Snoot. Yeah. So tech-wise, like, uh, w what is the status of this game, Todd? Well, it's kind of been slowed down here for both. I mean, Snooty had like the worst economy of all time here at the ninth minute mark for Zerg, just because he opened very aggressively like this. So he's gonna start a lair now, gets an Evo Chamber as well. I guess he's already gonna have a Roach Warren li leading up to uh, that situation where Lair's gonna finish, which is gonna be nice. But uh, this definitely wasn't ideal of a start here. Uh, for either player, oh, wow. you know, they both lost a lot of economy, I guess. Yeah, this queen uh, taking a little bit of damage as it moves outside, trying to cross over towards the third base position. There's the mothership core here too, but I think this beast queen should be enough to push this back eventually, right? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're going to do okay. Be able to crease spread as well with having so many queens early on. I wonder what Snoot goes into from there. He starts plus one missile. There is a chance he does what I talked about earlier, which is at least get hydralisks and then see where he's at. Maybe try for some mutas. Yeah, it would be tough to put much pressure on with Roaches when he has Mothership Core, obviously, now, but also the Void Ray, really strong against Roaches in low numbers. Can he afford to try and do a big push at this third? I don't think so. Not having Zerging speed, he's not going to allow a Zerg ever to, to break this third at, in the first place. Later okay. on, if he wants to go for a Roach Hydra attack or even Mass Hydra Ling, then you can try that here, Snoot, but not this early on in the game. All right, well, you mentioned this earlier, Todd. You know, Gung Banda gets a good, healthy number of sentries and takes this third. Not super late, at least relative to the game status with how slow Snoot's economy yeah. was. This this looks like it's a pretty well-timed third base for Protoss. Absolutely. Uh, Snoot's, if he's, I'm pretty sure he's thinking about doing some kind of attack here. I wonder if it's going to be with some mutar harassment in there or not. Regardless, a very important thing to note about Kung Fu Panda is that he's not like Lilbo. He's not going to mass a ton of stalkers to try and defend whatever is being thrown at him or even attack at some point. He likes to rush that Templar Archive a lot earlier. And usually, you only do that when there is already a hive on the way, which he needs to try and scout for. So now there is, I think, an opportunity for Snoot to try and do some damage himself, even regardless or not, or, or um, if there is um, a Templar Archive starting here in a moment. And I think. Kung Fu Panda, he, I think he knows this is coming. Again, this is two guys that play very often against each other on ladder. They are very, very high ranked. And right now, Kung Fu Panda gets cannons in his, uh, in his natural. So at this point, you're assuming he might just be worried about this big push yeah, coming He knows in. this is coming, I think. Okay, okay. He has plus two and blink on the way. Speed is finishing now, or it will be finishing very shortly with Hydralisk range and plus one Hydra oh, the attack. Turns don't around on time. Don't want to lose that. So the hallucinated phoenix sees that the army will approach from this position. Does this look like it can actually do much though, Todd? No, uh, Snoot is already transitioning. I think he realized that uh, Kung Fu Panda was getting ready pretty much already. And going into a Spire here and starting a fourth base, I think he's a very good move. He needs to make sure that he doesn't lose all of these units, though, Snoot. Yeah. Even if he trades here. I mean, he's pushing in pretty deeply as the first couple force fields come in. We can see Snoot trying to get around and create some space by pushing that pylon away and actually hold positioning some Zerglings in the mineral line. So he knows the Hydras are vulnerable, but he's trying to just throw the Lings in, get probe kills, oh, no, but it looks like he's dying. actually doing it. Oh my god, I can't believe Kung Fu Banda didn't evacuate that base here with the probes. The Nexus is going to get targeted now. 
Snoot wants to trade all of those uh, units for killing, the Nexus. Killing this would be pretty nice for Snoot, but if he doesn't get it, that is a lot of Hydras to trade away. He will focus it down, immediately tries to get the sentries. There's some Zealot Harass coming back over towards that third base. And you can see all the hecticness trying to handle all this pressure that Gung Fu Band is bringing. Yeah, he somehow sneaked a pylon on the right hand side here, which is a little bit sloppy here, I think, by Snoot not to have an overlord there to spot that. But behind this, the Spire is about to finish. And Snoots, he's got a little bit of gas, but really not that much here to get some mutas to try and uh, force more cannons, yeah. ideally. And if you look at Kung Fu Panda, you can tell that he's played against what I mentioned earlier, because he's already got two cannons yeah, in the Yeah, I was going to say, you, you mentioned it right before that fight started. He threw up a lot of extra cannons. Like, even the natural doesn't have it in the mineral line, but there's three at the wall. So Kung Fu Band is very well defensively postured. And now as he starts to move out, plus two is done. Blink's yeah. done. He has plus three on the way. And he's just adding in the gateways, trying to take that, retake that third base and get ready to push. What, what's really smart about this build, though, by Snoot is that he gets only a very few mutas to try and force more static defense. And then he hits with the timing with a lot of Hydralisk, with plus two missile at attacks. And if you don't have Colossus, which you never do, because usually you don't go for them, it's going to be really hard to hold on the ground against this many uh, Hydralisk. But in this case, Snoot starts an infestation pit. This is unusual. Right. I really thought he was going to hit the timing there no matter what. And at the same time that a Templar Archive starts here for Kung Fu uh, Panda. Yep, so he can eventually get that Storm or the Archons as well to help deal with this massive number of Zerglings. But the Mutalist commitment, you pointed out, not very large. With the Infestation Pit coming, is it what kind of Hive tech would he even go for? What is In your experience, what does Snoot like the most? Usually you, you go for it for Vipers, clearly. You okay. can get a bunch of Infestors if you want to. Right now, actually, Snoot, gas-wise, he's not doing too bad because he just saturated a 5th um, and 6th. And actually, in this case, does he actually want to attack? I don't think so here. Yeah, he's posturing around the third base, but not ready to commit just yet. Storm is on the way. Our first couple of Templar are being warped in. And there's the Hive now coming in as well. So the Templar will also be instrumental not only for those Storms yeah. that are trying to get feedbacks. Snoot is set up on four bases. What's the, what's the next play here? Does Snoot need to expand? Is Kung Fu Panda looking to hit a timing? or? I think Kung Fu Panda, what we've seen from him is that he doesn't take fourth bases. He goes for a timing when he has enough high Templars to hit a lot of storms, usually. But now we're starting wow. the Robo. I'm wondering. What he about this? down a bunch more gates. 11 more Mutalisks are coming out, though. So is he going to he's going to recommit to the Mutalisk play? Does, yeah. But Kung Fu Panda was already set up. Does he have enough to actually do this? Could he push out and be safe? I think Snoot is hoping that Kung Fu Panda will not expect it. And in this case, leave just the two cannons in his main there to defense and have the Mothership Core out of position. In which case, if you break those cannons, you force the Protoss back and then you buy yourself more time for this Hive Tech to really come into play. Snoot forgot he had the Roach War and he starts another one. Oh, oh no. That's awkward. You had it so early, Snoot. Yeah, he doesn't have Roach Speed either, so when he eventually does finish that, he won't have fast Roaches. And some of these Hydras actually get caught. Force Fields are going to lock him down. There's so much defense Kung back Panda. at home for uh, Kung Fu Panda. This is great here for him. Yeah, the weakest point is the main base. He's warping in Stalkers there, trying to get prepared so that he can defend against this. The Hydras are trying to work on this wall, but the probes are pulled out of the main. He hasn't lost too much yet. Those cannons really helping to pay as his army comes back to clean up these Hydras. Yeah, he has to, especially since because there's Mutas in the main. They're going to be targeting the forge here and getting it quite easily. Snoot, Snoot is buying himself so much time and it's going to give him, I think, enough time to get a bunch of spine crawlers across the map and take straight to Brule Lords if he wants to. He's yeah. going to be able to get uh, the Ultra Leaf Cavern here as well and set up that concave down the ramp here. Kung Fu Panda moves down there with his main army. Oh, oh yeah. this could be really dangerous. Really dangerous. Okay, there's the force field. He locks a lot of the Hydras on the ramp, but the Zerglings are still going to be a threat to the Stalkers in this position. Few of these Hydras will be able to pierce at the same time, more Zerglings coming in. No Greater Spire, but starts plus three attack as well. I think Kufu Panda might just all in here. Try to go around these spines. Can he? Is this attack enough? He has a lot of energy on those High Templar. Yeah, the thing is, he's not maxed out against the Snoot that's got a lot of units that can dance around against these storms on creep here. He's, he's going to be moving very quickly. Yeah, a little bit of blink control here being used against these Mutalisks, actually snapping up quite a few of them, but. Very good point. He's still at just 158 supply, even blocked now. He can't really yeah. build too many more forces. Protoss on three base. It's very, very hard to counter uh, Brood Lords properly. So if Snoot somehow reaches Brood Lords in this game, he's going to be in a fantastic position. But it looks like he's really worried about an attack. So he's going to start Kitinus plating and more upgrades first instead of starting a greater spire before anything. What about the lack of Zealots in this army against so many Zerglings? Oh, this 47 on the map. And he's going to try to just push up this ramp. I okay, guess the Zerglings aren't in this position. He's going to drop the Storms on those Hydras. Now the Lings come in from behind, and Hydras as well. So he needs to pick a side. He's going to move up the ramp, maybe try to force field this off. Drops the Storms behind him on top of all of these Hydralisks wow. of Snoot, mopping up this army. And Gung Fu Banda 
has brought the supply to equilibrium. 20 more Hydralisks are on the way, 28 Zerglings as well, and no sign yet of Ultralisks. He can't really afford it, he's just gonna make just one. That was very poorly timed here by Snoo to go for this. He was very late uh, with the attack on the left-hand side, and since he went for 87 drones here, he had so little army in comparison. Kung Fu Panda, this was just ideal here for him. He never had a plan to take a fourth, so taking a fight out in the open like this, with his storms doing so much damage, this was the dream, Nathanias, and I think he's going to try to close it out. And he's going to push in now towards the natural expansion. Blinks right on top of the Hydralisks. Drones will be pulled against this as well. That Archon just reduces them to mincemeat. Links come in from behind with the rest of the Hydras, but never able to fight with the whole army at once. 52 more Links on the way. Two Ultralisks close to completing, but Gung Fu Banda is slowly taking that supply lead against Snoot. Yes, yeah, Snoot clearly underestimated the side of this army here. He's trying to hold on. That one Ultra is going to come in. It needs to be a soppy Ultra there with the transfusers, but these Queens are not going to have that much more energy. And many Links coming. They're trying to clean up here. If Snoot cleans up, he's still going to be in trouble because he lost a lot of drones, but it's, it would definitely would be something here. Yeah, I mean, Gunfu Banda does have a slight worker lead, so these Stalkers that are continuing to run around and attack while he takes that fourth base, he's just trying to buy as much time for himself during all of this. Another Ultra comes out, the Mutalisks. He brought. He had to take absolutely everything to try and push this away. And Kung Fu Panda gets pushed back now, and uh, behind this, he has absolutely no tech whatsoever in terms of even transition. He has only one Robo, yeah. so he can't go into Im heavy Immortal production against the potential Ultras he's going to have to face. I mean, there's no, no creep. Not overextend. And there's no creep here, so these Ultralisks, uh, it's a bit difficult to actually push in like this. And I like that the Stalker just chases a little bit. He has the Archon to fall back on as well. Two Archons up that ramp, so... Not really enough for Snoot to close wow. out a fight either. Snoot redrawn back up so quickly here. 74 to 60 right now. He's going to have some pretty good income. And he can go very easily into a lot of Hydralisks, Ultras, make sure he's safe. And then go into Brood Lords if he wants to. But right now, we still don't have a great Aspire. And this time, I really understand that he didn't want to rush it still because Snoot needs to get closer to remaxing, I think, before anything. So what's the play for Snoot here, Todd? We have four Ultras on the way, a fifth one being added, and one Viper. Is this the army that he needs to deal with this force, or is Kung Fu Panda think, still in an okay place? I think he should just turtle. Just kind of sit back, wait for Kung Fu Panda to attack and crush him if he does, and then if he doesn't, just go for Broodlords, because Kung Fu Panda... Okay, there we go. I told you, on three base, you can't counter Broodlords properly. It's going to be very hard to get enough Tempest and even the economy to really counter it. But now, even though he's gone up to four bases, the main of Kung Fu Panda is mined out. So he's going to be, you see, like, tech-wise, yeah. he's only going to be on gateway plus robo units. So if Snoot somehow reaches the Brood Lords, I think this game comes to a very abrupt end in any kind of upcoming fight, especially if he gets a good number of them. So right now, Snoot, I th I'm pretty sure he knows that he's going to want to just kind of sit back. And as they say in the old days, uh, going for the GG Lords and... Gung Fu Band is trying to prompt him, bait him off of the creep. <laughs> and these Archons up front, he well, really does need those to help against the Lings, too. The Lings turn around very quickly, Nate, here. He didn't want to get demolished by the Psy Storm. In well, the Greater case, Spire is almost done. Yeah. And there are no Corruptors on the map, so Snoot will have to start a few of those up before he can move into them. Yeah, right now, all Snoot's thinking about is not dying. I'm actually surprised he's moving so far out. Oh, well, actually, the Stalkers are all away from the Archons. These Templar are left a little bit exposed. Not much here. Picks the Templar up in the War Prism by themselves, but there's not enough energy to actually do anything. Uh, Snoot realized there was no Immortals. If you don't have Immortals, these Ultras, they're going to chew through your army. Yeah, they can actually crush this. And the problem is the Stalkers can't focus on the Ultras because there's so many Zerglings. So just trying to blink and step back now, using the War Prism to reinforce, actually gets pulled away by the Viper. So can't warp in. And now the whole army for Gung Fu Ben is being cleaned up. Snoot. Uh, seizing the opportunity. What a brilliant hit read here by him. Got close to the army of Kung Fu Panda, saw that there was no Immortals. Goes straight for it. Kung Fu Panda is he's the one now trying to buy some time. Sacking some Zelos on the top right hand side, running with the Stalkers that are getting chased down. When Immortal is third base, he's gonna clean up the one Ultra that was there, but behind this, it's gonna be so hard for Kung Fu Panda to get enough Immortals here very soon to defend. And I, I mean, that fourth base is gonna die. He's uh, mined out his main, his natural Kung Fu Panda in so much trouble. Yeah, the lack of Immortals really made this push so much easier for Snoot to do, and he remains happily maxed out still, not even needing to use that Greater Spire that he had produced. And with this base being knocked down, that's pretty much it for the economy of Gung Fu Banda. Yeah, he's uh, right now hoping for the throw of the century here by Snoot. He's hoping that Snoot <laughs> attacks into a lot of Move Immortals. Move command the Ultras up I, yeah. that choke into the Archons it for about 40 sometimes. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe not even enough. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe go AFK for a little bit. The Ultras are cleaning out the third base here of Snoot. Storms are not going to kill Ultralisks. There are two Immortals with this army, but as the rest of the force comes in and he's going to slowly get on top of this, those Immortals are going to work, trying to get a few more of these forces out, but Zerglings are going to stream in as well to help deal with these Immortals and Stalkers. Not quite so strong against those units. The Ultralisks are starting to die, but I think Snoot's got it. GG. Gung Fu Bandit taps out, and Snoot does take game number one in this best of three. What a hold. I really thought Snoot was just going to die after this Hydralisk in the map got killed, and then he got a counterattack, because the, the army of Kung Fu Panda was just massive. And in the end, that was an insane hold here. He sacked like, something like 35 drones to barely hold on, yeah. but in the end, that's what won in the game. After that fight, it was something like 60 probes, maybe 43 drones, and then you pointed it out nearly less than a minute later, he was right back up to 76, just absolutely phenomenal decision-making by Snoot yeah. to not die and then recover his economy well, after that. The decision to not die is, was an easy <laughs> well, one. <but. laughs> still, still, it was tough. Uh, I do believe we are going to go to a quick break before we get into game number two. You guys are watching the World Championship Series Premier League Round of 16. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the World Championship Series Premier League Round of 16. Today we're finishing up the Round of 16 as we get ready to go to Krakow for the finals of Season 3. Todd, it's been a pretty awesome day so far. Snoot finds himself up 1-0 comfortably. Every single series top-notch, and uh, it's been no different here between these two. It's a pretty back-and-forth game, uh, I think we could say here. Snoot opening very aggressively in map number one. Not doing that much damage, but definitely enough to say that they were kind of equal coming out of this behind these drones really hard. And then we're going to Hive Tech against the Protoss player on three bases. And Snoot, for a moment, it really looked like a, he was going to be in lots of trouble, but after that fantastic hold, did everything right and won the game. 
Yeah, there's a really, really phenomenal play by Snoot, especially that decision he made not to die, Todd. Sometimes <laughs> it's a tough one. When I play Terran, I just want to move out of my base and die all the time. That, that's but, uh, typical you, Nathanius, creating yeah. memes without even trying. What can I say? It's, uh, StarCraft is a really difficult game. It is difficult enough that that is a powerful choice. We're going to Dash and Terminal for game number two of this best of three here in the World Championship Series round of 16. And we are loaded in. We are ready to rock and roll on the right side of the map. We have the blue Zerg player representing Norway and Team Liquid, he's Snoot. His opponent in the Northwest needs to make that decision not to die himself. He is the German Protoss Kung Fu Banda. Now Todd, you know what I'm gonna ask you. What about this map? This is crazy. Yeah, this map, uh, it can be really tricky because that entire area around your natural that you need to defend as Protoss when you when you go for that Nexus because you do go for that Nexus almost no matter what. So Snoot, I feel like picking this, there is a chance we might see a special build out of him, but usually you don't even need to. Like you just playing on this map alone is gonna be enough for a Protoss to kinda be scared, go that extra mile to make sure he's safe. And in this case, Kung Fu Panda, that's a gateway at twelve here that he went for. Okay. Not quite the Roddy Gateway, but still a pretty early so one. What, what, is, what exactly does this mean? What, does this open any options for him, or is it just a safer way to, to style it? He wants to get everything a little bit faster here on one base, uh, whether he goes for that Nexus or not. If not, he might try and be aggressive himself here, Kung Fu Panda, with something like Zealots, Mothership Core, and then uh, maybe a Stalker. But since he's not taking a gas, I guess he just wants to play it standard, but the early, gate, uh, the early gateway was just in case Snoot was going to do some, something like a Zergling Rush. And in this case, Snoot, I feel like this is the first time in a long time we see him go for something else than a pull first. Yeah, I mean, imagine that he wanted to go for a fast three-hatch play too as well. He can't really do that with his fast gate, right? Because he could chrono out a Zealot, yeah. maybe? Absolutely. And this is the one map as well where, like, as Zerg, you scout Protoss so damn early with your overlord. Like, you're right in there, you see everything that uh, a Protoss player is doing. Kung Fu Panda went even already for the backdoor pylon near his natural to make sure that no links later on get in there. And both players, they definitely, you know, put in some good work here already to open very safely and try and get ahead. And in this case, it's Snoot, I think, with the hatchery first that won't get punished, that uh, maybe got a little bit of the better end of things. Yeah, it's crazy to think now for Kung Fu Banda coming into this series, you're down 0-1, you need to turn the series around on dash and terminal. Does this map, I mean, I, I don't know how much experience you have playing it, does this map have uh, any real differences as far as how the mid game goes? Does this, is any of the features of this map change up the styles we might see? Uh, later on, there is a huge area that you need to cover with force fields if you wanna take a, a third base as Protoss, which a lot of the time you do. So force fields, they're gonna be much harder to properly be used okay. in defending against this. And against somebody like Snoot who just loves to get in your face, make a lot of Hydralisks, it's actually, I think, going to come into play big time. If Snoot was to play the similar style that he did in a previous game, which is what we expect here, Kung Fu Panda is going to have to play a hell of a lot better than last game, I think, if he wants to be able uh, to be okay, okay and survive. And I guess the only other thing I'd be really interested in is um, how much uh, do you think the airspace in the northeast area plays into this? Does this make it that much better for Mutalisks, or is it just something that players have kind of adjusted to and they know, okay, I should watch out for a warp prism in the north side? Yeah, doesn't really come into play that much, I think. Like the short distance by air usually on this map, just because your bases, they are so close apart to each other, like the main and natural also. So defending is not going to be that big a problem. Maybe it'll be harder for a Protoss player if there is Mutas flying into the main and he's not ready. That's okay. what you don't want to have happen. But in this case, Kung Fu Panda goes for a target, which it's funny. At Snoot, like I said before, he doesn't really sacrifice his overlords. He, he would much rather, I spoke about it with him, much rather start Spores blind. He says it's cheaper than to have to start another overlord, but in this case, yeah, this is one of the few maps where he's going to see it anyway. That's awesome for Snoot, because now he doesn't have to lose the overlord. He has the information in front of him, and Kung Fu Banda, I guess the Stargate play kind of works in the same you know, um, thread as the short air distance being good for Mutas. You can get an Oracle across very quickly, yeah. or perhaps you know Phoenix, if you wanted to do Phoenix harassment, but... It will be a bit tricky since uh, you know Snoot's aware of what's up. Absolutely, I think Kung Fu Panda might be playing to be aggressive here, though, with two more gateways plus a probe across the map that's sneaking there. With the Phoenix too? 
Yeah, absolutely. Phoenix into something like three or four gate zealot is something that against Zerg has always been very scary. And Snoot, even though he spotted the Stargate there, much like in the previous game, he doesn't have any overlords in position on the map uh, in the bottom left hand side of his natural and third base to spot any kind of pylons going down there. Okay. So he's going to be blind to that entire area. Say a few, a bunch of zealots walk in and he's not ready. He's going to be taking losses for sure. All right, definitely a tough position to be in as Zergling Speed has only just started, so those Zealots could really get some work done. And it's just been pretty comfortable to just drone up and play defensively. We don't even have a lair on the way yet, so just content to get upgrades and play slow. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda is now going to proxy a pylon on bottom left hand side here. Already thinking about whopping in a bunch of Zealots. Corner Boost is plus one as well. I guess plus one is one. Huh. So these Zerglings are chasing back across this one Stalker, but the speed is so far away they won't be able to get it. Yeah. Is there anything these Lings will see when they reach his base that say, okay, we have something to worry about? Uh, they're going to see Stalkers, which actually is even a little bit weird even, for yeah, Even Fu without Panda. speed, it's kind of weird. He might be planning to get more and more Stalkers to try and snowball, but against this many Lings, I'm not sure exactly so what he's playing for here. Because, right, you, you know, he is set up really well to do some aggressive warpins and try to do damage, but he does start the third Nexus behind all of this, and there's no Overlord or Zerg yeah. to see that third base. The thing about his attack is that Kung Fu Panda, even if he gets in trouble there, he can recall out of there, so he's not going to commit everything to this, and he's most likely going to have to recall here very soon because Snoot's got a ton of links. He, he achieved something, though. Snoot's economy hasn't been developing here. It's, he's not on... He's not as many drones as, as he would have liked to be. Yeah, if the Zerglings do come in, they surround these Stalkers and force that recall that you talked about, one of the Phoenix and that Zealot get left behind. But he still has the pile on there, so he could still uh, you know, try to hold that position around with the I plus wonder, one attack. Snoot might be able to threaten, actually, across the map. Kung Fu Panda cannot mess up here, these force fields. It needs to be very there's careful. a lot of things. And we see here the first-person perspective of Gung Fu Bandit. He's gonna try ready, to surround? Trying to defend this base. Can he do it? Sees these Zer Zerglings coming in from all sides. Force fields in his Stalkers, but the third next is still a lot of surface area available for those links to hit it. And Snoot's really getting in there. That gateway is gonna be cancelled there. He's out of force fields. Snoot's gonna be surrounding these forces here, killing all of the sentries and Stalkers. And you can see Gung Fu Bandit lifts up his own units just to save them from those Zerglings as his plus one attack has just now finished. So his Zealots will trade far superior against these Zerglings. Now that was really smart, uh, but in the end, being able to kill this many sentries is the biggest of deals. Kung Fu Panda is down to one single sentry. Scouting wise, I guess he's still gonna have those Phoenixes to try and fly across the map with. And now Blink and plus two has started. Kung Fu Panda, I'm pretty sure this is, that this is going to be a similar play that we saw in all of his recent games. The last three that he played today against Zerg with the three base blink. And I guess trying to make something happen. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty intense moment there. And as you mentioned, losing sentries is never something that you want to do in this particular position. The Zealots are still in a really nice spot. Wow, though, two, by two this already pylon. starts for Snoot here. He's going to play that Ling heavy style. Even though he has a Roach Horn, that's a safety Roach Horn here that he went for. Um, in the case of mass Zealot play, and that's actually really nice because that plus one attack doesn't give the Zealots an advantage now that I think about it. Oh, if he could get the Nexus there. Only going to dispatch a very few Zerlings though. Kung Fu Panda, he wants to be more aggressive. He still has one recall, so even if, even if there is enough here, he can recall out once again. Yeah, really He's force a cancel on fourth base. Really good use of those abilities, being able to get the recall out in time. Not you know, at least trying not to lose the most yeah. expensive forces. But the counter attacks have uh, obviously been a thorn in his side. He does cause Snoot to commit though to that road speed. Snoot's very concerned about the next uh, wave of warpins that could do a lot of damage here. Snoot spotted the massive amount of zealots here. It still goes for the full surround here on Kufu Panda Sami. And it, it's not the fight so far. Yeah, it's not even that bad for Snoot. You know, if he doesn't if he doesn't go for those carapace upgrades for his lings and they die in two shots, that's a really really tough yeah. moment because then those zealots can actually clean all of that up. And now Hive is going to start Kung Fu Panda. He doesn't have a Robo. He only has targets. He, he starts, just starts the Robo He now. starts Robo now as the Hive starts. Ah, this is this is not good here for him. So what's the biggest threat here then? What is Kung Fu Panda worried about? The, the same as last game. Like He's going to have lo a lot less tech to properly deal with something like Ultras into Brewlords. Snoot is sometimes being a little bit too aggressive, but getting a sent a surround on the sentries here oh. and killing even more of them. This is a big deal. Yeah, he's killed all but two of the sentries, all but one now, and might actually get the final sentry running through. He does kill all of them. And even some more of these roaches and links spilling across. These stalkers push back into the natural expansion. And there's, now there's no wall because the zealot was pulled out of position as well, so he can continue to chase in. Gets on top of the photon cannon, and the third base looks like it's somewhat solidly held up, but yeah. you know, Snoot's really throwing Gung Fu Banda for a ride. It's been breached here a little bit. Uh, he's going to have to re warp more units here. It's Gung Fu Panda to try and hold on Snoot behind this. He's got Hive and Spire about to finish at the same time. The fourth base 
it's going to be up really soon. So even though he sacrificed some economy here to try and go for this attack, in the end, this is not the biggest of deals here. But nice hold by Kung Fu Panda, definitely here. Yeah, he had a brief moment where his plus two attack was done. Now the 2-2 two -two has completed for Snoot, so those Lings will trade very well against the Zealots again, and he's even going straight into 3-3. There's, like, there's none of those upgrade advantages that he gets, and Adrenal Glands. Yeah, this is going to be massive here if he can complete that here, and uh, I do think that Snoot's going to be able to. Kung Fu Panda is setting up defensively here, getting cannons at his natural. What do you do? Like, what, what, is, what do you do in this position if you're Kung Fu Bandit? Because it seems like he's in a really tight spot. Yeah, I'm not sure that's... What I do is important, Nate, because I'm pretty terrible. But uh, <laughs> in this case, I think he should try and identify exactly what Snoot's going for. If it's Ultras, if it's Brutalos. In this case, it kind of looks like both right now. We're getting <laughs> the Ultra this Cavern, plus the Greatest Power Snoot covering all of his bases. There is a recall here available. He might be forced to... Yeah, this is bad. When you have, to, re to, recall when right you have next to recall within the same screen length of vision, <laughs> you know you're in a tough spot. And these Zerglings, man, they just do so They're much gonna get the robo. these Zealots. Oh my god, if they get the Robo before the War Prism is out here, this is huge, because I'm pretty sure that Kung Fu Panda wanted to attack here with this. This is so rough for Kung Fu Panda. He has not been able to get a good fight against this force at all. As you said, that Robotech shut down. Now, that means there's like no answer against these Ultralisks. He has just two Immortals on the map, and there are four Ultralisks on the way. Yeah, this is massive here for Snoot, being able to start the 3-3. Three, three, yeah, four Ultras on the way. He's got the Grave Spire about to finish as well, and uh, this time around definitely can very easily go into Brew Lords. As we look, uh, yeah. we take a look at the vision here of the man himself. Yeah, Snoot just trying to make sure that he, you know, he dots all the I's, crosses the T's, doesn't mess up anything important as he, he sees sets this army on the minimap up. right now. He sees the army on the minimap, and he knows that Kung Fu Panda is headed for him. But I don't think Snoot cares too much because he's got a lot of units already. Yeah. Actually, he has and quite a bit ultras. of a bank. Now the Ultras are coming out too, and as you say, yeah, Snoot has the option to build whatever he wants. His forces are going to be caught again. These Zerglings do have the Adrenal Glands upgrade now. 3-3 three, three is so close to finishing, and plus 3 attack is actually not yet done. So those Zealots, they can't even trade that well. And because of the Vipers, this is actually going to be very dangerous here for Kung Fu Panda, because if this Mothership Core gets abducted and killed by the Queens, his entire army, I think, he's going to die behind it. Yeah, and I mean, that's what Snoot's aiming for. Can so he get the... Top, he could use the Blinding Cloud as well on top yeah. of the Immortals. This way they can't actually help against the Ultralisks trying to run away, trying to run back. Even the Blinding Cloud in the back to keep them from having somewhere to run to. Just, wow. so, just so elegantly done. And he moves in on this fourth base, trying to actually shut this down. The choke point works well for the Stalkers, though. Look at how well it traded. Snoot is pulling so far ahead in supply. Kung Fu Panda is going to hold, but... Taking a lot of losses, yeah. actually killing those Vipers here is going to be pretty nice yeah. for him. But behind this, the struggle has been real. Starts a Stargate, a second one. Interesting. I, I mean, what do you, what do you imagine usually you he get, goes with this? Tempest? Yeah, is usually he's worried, he's worried about Broodlord. So he starts a ten, uh, Stargate to go into a Fleet Beacon. But right now, like the game has been so tense and he's been able to hold, so Kung Fu Panda is definitely thinking about okay. counter-attacking. But this is just before Storm. All right, well, he's got a War Prism in here. He recalls back to the fourth base. He has a War Prism inside the main base of Snoot, so he'll be looking to try to get some work done. Uh, it doesn't actually warp anything in, but does pull back some of those forces. Kung Fu Panda has secured a fourth base, by the way, uh, pretty, through all this. Pretty impressive, but he still needs that, that higher level of tech to keep moving, though, right? There's yeah. 10 Ultras on the map. Absolutely. Kung Fu Panda has to face a bunch of brood lords here. It's not going to be a good time, as he's still getting more and more immortals out here Four to, to deal with the ultralisks. I mean, eleven ultralisks with some vipers to use blending cloud. They are going to be a pain, no matter what. Four corruptors are about to finish, so we will see. Oh, the uh, greatest brood lord soon. Too. Oh my God. The Zealots are going to move in on it, but there's just so many Zerglings yeah. here ready to dive on it. And keep in mind, they have the 3-3 three, three upgrades, they have Adrenal Glands, so they're very powerful forces. The War Prism will be shut down by these Corruptors, and then he could be pretty much free to just turn them straight away into Broodlords if he wants. Yeah, the War Prism is going to get shut down here by the Corruptors very nicely. Yeah. Snoots he hasn't got that much gas right now, but the decision to take the gold is wow. actually going to give him some extra gas if he were to saturate that very soon. Yeah. Kung Fu Panda is trying to set up in a good position here, but uh, he can't move up that ramp. And likewise, Snoot can't attack into Kung Fu Panda's army just yet, I think. He's yeah. going to go around, actually. He's going to come in from multiple sides. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda realizes he actually left the War Prism alive as he starts to attack there. But yeah, the Ultras move on the army. He's coming up by the South Tower, trying to hit him from both directions here. Actually, the Ultras, you know, start to walk through the storms. They're trying to get over that choke oh, point. Oh, the Greater Spire is going to be targeted in the meantime by Kung Fu Panda here. A very important move before any Broodlords could start. Yeah, he starts to push the Ultralisks back. They do oh, start building three. the Broodlords. The Greater Spire is killed, but three Broodlords are coming in. We still do have two Stargates wow. available for Kung Fu Panda, but no Fleet Beacon. 
Funka is, is a beast, Ugh. by the way, catching this just before it happened here. Starting a very few the blue rods in time. That's such a huge play. The Corruptor that was hitting that War Prism, like he just pulled it away off the hockey with yeah. four hit points left. I thought this War Prism was going to get shut down for sure, and now he's still out there. He's a real hero. For sure. Only three blue lords. This is not <laughs> ideal. It's, it's pretty sick to think that if Gung Fu Bandit somehow wins this game, it's pretty much because that Corruptor let this War Prism yeah. kill the Greater Spire. That one, what, single War Prism, now starts the Dark Shrine as well. And then he dies a very unceremonious death. Classic. <laughs> Well, Dark Shrine, yeah, you said on the way. Um, continuing to add in Immortals. How much? How much oh, of a threat? How Snoot, much do these he's doing the trick. actually do? He's oh, doing wow. the trick. He's opening up more supply by building lots of static defense. Yeah, a That's lot of spores in this case. Going to be adding uh, one more Ultra and Queen. What was your question? Uh, I was just going to say, how much do these three Broodlords actually affect the fight? Like, what's the biggest problem they cause? They're going to. I mean, they're going to be dropping some Broodlings on this army, which. Kung Fu Panda doesn't have much to deal with them as well. It's not like he can blink forward because he'd lose all stalkers instantly. So the thing is, is it going to be enough rulings for Snoot to properly swarm on the ground? With this many Zerglings against High Templars? I do think so, but he can't get in there too quickly. And that goal base, he's on the threat. Yeah, the Zealot Harass has been very real from this point. You can actually just warp in out of your main base, I think, onto this low ground if you wanted to as Kung well. Fu Panda is super rich, by the way. He's dropping down additional gateways, and with the Dark Shrine, he's going to have now actually catching some of the Brood Lords. Yeah, if the Phoenix can get to work on those, that's always nice, especially considering that they are not replaceable at this point in time. Never replace the Spire. Yeah, a little bit surprising. Oh, he's going forward now. He yeah, actually, the, the Ultras are going to actually hit from the north and hit from the south at the same time. Moving forward, there's the Blinding Clouds too, continuing to force him to retreat. Actually, those storms really hitting a lot of the Zerglings. And uh, Kung Fu Panda was forced here to have a bunch of Zealots around this gold base to defend it as well against a few of the links. But he's going to be trying to snipe Snoot's gold base, which is exposed. Both players running all around the place here. And the Zealot Harass, very real. I, it's uh, unbelievable the impact that sniping that Spire and leaving that War Prism alive has done. Two of the Brood Lords are dead. The focus is back on the ground. Gold base Nexus for Kung Fu Panda gets cancelled, but he's... He's taking the driver's seat slowly but surely in this game. Yeah, more spines are going to go down here for Snoot. He wants to make sure he's at least going to be on four to five bases. Well, he never got kindness for the them. Ultras, too. That's such a huge deal. Just yeah. noticed that. Well, our wonderful observer just noticed that. He's Coming been 3-3 three, three the entire game, but forgot Katyn is fading. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal. That extra armor means everything at this point. And I love this. Spire the restarts. DTs. So finally the Spire is on the way again, but it's still be a long time before you can make more Broodlords. Oh, and that base is going to be cancelled on the left-hand side as well. Snoot is keeping up very well. He's got a good rhythm. Oh, and here. Ultra pops out here too, so free Ultralisk for Gung Fu Bandit to kill basically, as he uh, cannot retreat to the rest of the army. That's going to free some supply though, killing these drones here. Some more supply for army here. Both players right now kind of in death ball modes. Trying to add everything they can to make sure that they can win the upcoming fight. That's extra void inevitable. Rays. Void rays being added in for Gung Fu Band. You also teach him respect. Yeah, I, I you know what Ultralisks, uh, They certainly you have to have a lot of respect for void rays in that particular scenario. They can't kill them. So, and it's, I actually scan, I actually like it because you know starting to mix in Stargate units at this point is also nice since you know that your opponent kind of wants to get back to Spire Tech anyway. Yeah, but he's gonna have Queens. Nate. Yeah. I, guess, I don't the, know. I did guess you know that they are the best counter to Void Ray? Yeah, I am aware of that. They're quite strong. But they also, the Void Rays can also help if he can clean up this force. Like, because all these spine crawlers, the Ultralisks can't really dance around those too much, or at least the Queens can't as easily. Another Zealot Warpin actually makes it into the main base with a DT, so be nice to snipe the Spore, but unfortunately there's an Overseer there too. The Zerglings clean that up with the one Broodlord. Yeah, Kung Fu Panda here is uh, very confident actually to take a fight out on the map. You can I see him dancing around in front of the, the base of Snoot here. Is, is this the only army that Gung Fu Panda needs? He's adding in seven more Stalkers, but he's not gone up to any further like tech. There's no uh, you know Fleet Beacon or anything of that sort. Is it, He can just afford to chip away like this? Against Broodlords, no. But right now, since there is no Broodlords, I think he's okay to take a fight. Only Blinding Cloud Fungal here would be very, very scary, but he's still got High Templars. And right now, I think he's happy to be dancing around, even though He's going to be getting another Nexus Ooh, snipe here. Zerglings cancel that fifth base and actually try to run over towards the third base too. There's two Photon Cannons tucked in. He's going to warp in defensively a few Zealots trying to hold this back. That Robo's going to die. Yeah, can't see. yeah, that's actually really nice. Kills the Robotics Facility. Actually makes his way into the natural. Can deny some of the gas money oh, here. That Forge is going to die as well here. Yeah, even before the... Armor. Oh no, Baby. actually no. He didn't put enough on it. Those links, man. They're so strong. They kill everything so fast. Snoot might be trying to catch this army here. 
Yeah, well, he can up. fight the Ultras alone without oh, wow. the Vipers. He could actually do quite a bit. He's going to run back now, dropping the Storms as everything starts to chase. DT's going to kill the Gold Base during all of this. And there's the feedbacks dropping on the Vipers. No Blinding Clouds continuing to just kite against this army, dropping the Time Warps too, trying to slow everything down. The Void Ray shows up, needs to keep these Immortals spread against the Ultralisks, keep them away from the Queens with those Transfuses. And even though he's killing a lot of the Ultralisks, he's lost every single one of his Immortals. Yeah, those Queens dealing with the Void Rays there, but on the ground, if all of those Ultras die, then the Queens are going to get chased down and killed. Snoot turns around, don't think he can do any well anymore here in this fight. And behind this, look at the massive bank of Kung Fu Panda. Even though he's not max right now, as long as he keeps on warping in, he's even added on four more gateways. Might be able to just go for an attack here to try and end it. Yeah, there's six more Ultralisks on the way, but so many stalkers here with these waveways. Those Ultralisks stepping forward, a bit ambitious of them. Ah, oh, Snoot is broke. Yeah. Losing that gold base. He's got 4,500 gas and no minerals. Infestor time? Yeah, the go go for the wind fester. I don't know about oh, that though. The, it's GG, be real the tough. GG Lords weren't rich, so it's time well, to go for the wind fester. It could have it could have been GG Lords if uh, if it weren't for that four hit point war prism he let live. So crazy how the smallest uh, the smallest things in StarCraft can just cause this whole game yeah. to go on basically. Kung Fu Panda, he's now on the fifth base. Could definitely start that gold I base love as well. This. He's got Moves so the many void rays up front. You just Prismatic alignment on those Ultralisks forced him to commit to the fight, and now everything is spread out. He's got the storms to drop on top of this as well. This is Snoot's last army, by the way. He doesn't have any he economy behind this. this. He has nothing behind this. He can't replace this army, and now Gung Fu Banda, he's got the resources, he's got the warp gates, he can continue to reinforce, he can continue to get ready to push back against this, and honestly, this game has just been a pretty sick comeback. Yeah. Why did he attack? Could have just started another hatchery over there and I think he, made I, infestors. I mean, I guess he's probably just realizing to himself, he's like, well, he has that center base. Yeah. He I can't think compete. Snoot has been picked apart the entire game by those War Prism. Not just the Greatest Pyre, but even in his main, having to defend against Zelos, being stretched out of position. So he finally lost patience eventually, which is what can happen against this many drops when they do damage. And in this case, I don't know, this just caused mistakes eventually here from him, and uh, he's now very far behind. This is this has just been so crazy. He did finally replace the Greater Spire, so we are going to see uh, one more Brew yeah. Lord. He even made another one, which another Spire is yeah, not he gonna help you. He's too broke to stop some of He doesn't have any corruptors, so yeah, exactly. It's just so expensive. He's broke. He needs to secure more expansions if he wants to be able to bring this one back, but he'll try. Kung Fu Panda just restarts his gold base. Snoot starts a base on the bottom left hand side, which is immediately spotted here by Zealot and Stalker. And I love that he has the DT at the gold base, too. You know, during that last yeah. fight, he shut it down. That could have been all of Snoot's economy. If Kung Fu Panda doesn't attack here, which he's not, he's giving a serious chance to, for Snoot to come back in this game. So yeah. he definitely, I think, should be attacking. All he needs is a bit of mineral income, and he can spend that gas very quickly on Broodlords. If Snoot is allowed to make 10-plus Broodlords against this army, he's going to have a serious shot at winning here. He's I think if Kung Fu had attacked Whoa. now, he would have won. Nine Mutas. Okay. Uh, if he wants to shut down that War Prism once and for all. Been struggling the entire game against it. Usually you make just one or two, though. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that, mostly because there's still two Stargates on the map, so it's not like it'd be tough for Gung Fu Banda to squeeze out Phoenix. Yeah. They don't have range upgrade, I guess, but... Oh, the like Infestation Pit is getting sniped. Yeah, it does, uh, does not want to lose that, especially since it's one of the best gas sinks that you're going to have. So the there War you Prism go, War get Prism. The War get Prism out of here. Finally knocked down. There's a lot of Vipers here, so there's potential for a ton of Blinding Clouds or Abducts, I guess, to be pulled in on and those Archons queens, escape. Oh my god, the feedbacks. Well, yeah, the feedbacks are very real here, on, especially on those Queens or on those Vipers in this position. Doesn't want to come up to that ramp. And just pushing this mineral line, preventing the, the income, preventing him from being able to mine, and those Vipers get closer and closer to those Templar and Stalkers, just losing them all. Yes, yeah, Snooze losing a ton of very important units there. Wasn't quite able to get uh, more than two Brewlords this time, and he's going for... Mutas instead. I think he wants to somehow try to, I guess, do some kind of base I mean, trade where he wrecks the economy of Kung Fu Panda and has his own going on at home. I mean, if he could spend all of his minerals and gas right now on Mutas, then perhaps that'd be possible. But in this position with so many Archons, you're not going to fight this head-to-head. -head. Jumps in, blinks for it, even into the blinding cloud. He still has the DTs up front to help melee against these queens. And this expansion, he doesn't even need to move to the third base. You deny this base, you deny all the income that Snoot has in this game, and he can't build anything else. It's all over. Yeah, but see, if you look at this army here, Kung Fu Panda, I don't think he cares too much about just losing one single base. He's got so many Stalkers, 28 of them against 23 Mutas. He's got Archons, High Templars, and those Stalkers, they are 3-1. Just phenomenal, phenomenal recovery in this game. Kung Fu Panda really uh, got to give a tip of the hat. This was a very tough spot to be put in early on. 
And the Hero War Prism bought him a new lease on life, and well, he uh, he cashed that check in a pretty big way. Mutas are going to continue to harass, but he can't stop the army that's already in his base. Yeah, still so trying to make the decision not to die here, but... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes sure. that decision is not always ours, Todd. Yeah, he's, I think he's out of his hands here at this point, Nathanius. Yeah, going to drop the storms on these drones and ultralisks, pushing his army as he continues to blink the stalkers back home. GG's called Gung Fu Banda ties the series one to one here at the World Championship Series round of 16. Uh, that's, uh, that is definitely a nail-biting game for any Protoss player, Todd. Yeah, looks absolutely relieved, and uh, he was not in a good position at all. When Brulos started being made, he was supposed to be in lots of trouble, but Snoot took his time a little bit too much, didn't properly shut down that War Prism, didn't make enough stack defense in the main, actually. you, Especially on this map, we talked about how very early on in the game, you asked me, you know, and uh, if it comes into play, and I was like, well, your army is always close enough, but in this case, he really used the War Prism in the main while dancing with his army out on the map very well, that Snoot just fell apart in terms of splitting his army properly to defend against those units and then kind of tilted and attacked as well. Yeah, that War Prism was just so instrumental for being able to secure that game. And I, you know, one of the, the biggest moments is when he first goes for the Greater Spire. The War Prism was behind the natural expansion. He got a few Zealots in there, immediately cleaned up, and then, okay, Corruptors went to it, but it just barely slips away, like not realizing he didn't kill yeah. it. And that's what allowed him to then kill the Greater Spire. Then you don't have any Broodlords, and this immortal Archon army wrecks your Ultras. Snoot should have been able to anticipate that this was going to happen as well, because this is like you attack a Nexus, and then you leave it to like 50 hit points. As a Protoss yeah. player, you know your opponent is going to be coming right back in there to try and finish it. So now it was the same thing. There was the first attempt to get a Greater Spire, and after it failed, Snoot should have known that Kung Fu Panda was going to try again. Yeah, it's still just incredible that the Corruptor was even let, to, you know, like just the, the fact that that War Prism still lived, you know, it's not like... Uh, there was any, you know, sick micro or finesse that happened, but unfortunately for Snoot, that does mean he's tied one apiece here, as uh, this is an elimination match. We're going to go to a very short break. Before we finish up this series, we'll be right back. Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series round of 16. We are in the deciders match for this group, and we just had a pretty, uh, pretty rough game, too, for Snoot. Looked a little shaken up after that one, Todd. Yeah, was uh, shaking a little bit while drinking his water. I mean, there's so much on the line. Remember, Kung Fu Panda, on one hand, doesn't, have, doesn't particularly have that much pressure on his shoulders, because people are not talking about his bliss consciences or anything. He's just... I guess, in, I guess in there trying to, to do well in the tournament, whereas Snoot, he knows that there is so much on the line here for him. One of the best foreigners here for a very long time, always has done very well in any tournament he's participated in, still has an okay chance to qualify for BlizzCon, especially if he goes really far in this tournament. And now we're on match point all of a sudden in a game he was doing really well in on Dash yeah. and Terminal with, earlier. With your, terminal life, with your tournament life on the line, there's, there's too much at stake for you know, mistakes like letting that War Prism live. And that's, he has to avoid that. That's, those are the kinds of things that will get you knocked out of Premier League, but it's time to go into game number three. This is it. This decides who moves on and who goes home in the northwest of Terraform. We have the Blue Zerg from Team Liquid. Give it up for Snoot.
His opponent in the bottom right position, the red Protoss from Germany, we have Gung Fu Benda! Who, by the way, just always looks so calm. Like he doesn't, I don't know, doesn't look like he gets phased too much. Yeah, maybe mental preparation prior to coming here to Poland to play in these matches. Uh, might play a huge role in that. And like we said, Snoot is definitely the one who's going to be feeling the heat here. Especially after the position he was in, which, I mean, it was looking really good for him, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, those are the kinds of things that can just really dig into you afterwards, you know. And I'm sure that this game, uh, if we reach a point where there is some serious harassment going on, there's not quite as much airspace on this map. But if we get there, you know, he will more more than certainly, I would imagine, look out for things like those war prisms, especially make sure that they actually die too, as a really powerful comeback tool for the Protoss player. Still, really surprised that Snoot didn't try for something like mass infestors. Yeah, he did have 5,000 gas. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> a bit hard to spend that on mutas, but infestors would be a little bit easier. And Snoot's going to be opening with the, his standard pull first there. Not quite a hatchery first kind of guy. Kind of did it in a previous game, but I, th I think just because he was dash and terminal. Yeah. Well, that map, we just see so much less than the others here in uh, WCS. And yeah. This probe's going to be annoying, trying to block the natural. Kung Fu Panda is doing something we don't really see as much anymore with opening uh, with a gas here. And yeah. uh, with the one base proper, you know, gas cyber core opener before going to any kind of nexus. Well, he's been done doing a really uh, decent job here of delaying the hatchery from being placed too. So uh, if if you're Kung Fu Panda then, with this style of opening, does this give him a chance to be more aggressive if he wants? Does seeing the lack of gas tell him that there's any opportunity? Yeah, definitely. If you wanted to try and do some aggression with a bunch of gateways, three or four, be it with Zealot or Stalkers. I know Roddy is a big fan of that one Stalker yeah. push that you can do against with this. no speed, yeah. Yeah, definitely could do that. The thing is, Snoot usually is pretty damn good against this. Like, he's been around forever, plays a ton of games. He was in there playing a bunch of tournaments during the Sun era, when, when he was theorizing oh, all the yeah. Zerg. So, Snoot, you know, I talk with him a bunch, and I know that uh, against this kind of build, usually, he knows what he has to do to properly defend. So I'm not sure he'd be the one guy you should try this against. All right, well, the probe that was out on the map does get spotted. So no opportunity here to really throw in a pylon or try to make any plays. The Mothership Core is going to come out. Um, I don't think this probe will be able to make it back, especially if the Mothership Core doesn't run straight towards it. So without any uh, big aggressive capabilities, off of this gateway opening, is there something that you would prefer to see on this map then? Does Terraform open up a certain tech path for Gung Fu Banda? If he wants to try something oh, wow. special, he can maybe go for some something like Dark Templars, but against Snoot, who again, usually doesn't sacrifice Overlords and gets Blind Spores, one of the best things you can do is just get a bunch of sentries, take a third base, and then try and be aggressive with it. Be with a low amount of probes, and then with or without Blink. Just try to move out, make sure he's not droning up uh, as much as he wants to be, and uh, try to get in his face, you know, to make something happen, because at times Snoot there's been some games, uh, I remember back when he played against Showtime, where he kind of fell apart against some of these attacks and uh, just underestimating the amount of sentries and stalkers that are on the map sometimes okay. can be uh, a dis put him in a disastrous position. And in this case, he started speed here before going to a third base. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. We're not seeing any fast uh, tech push. That's because he wants to go for the goal, I think. And uh, when you do that, you need to have... A little bit of extra safety, if you can. Yeah, this map control that speed will give you makes it a lot easier to hold uh, on to those. Kung Fu Panda knew about this somehow. Yeah, he, he pulls away because he see, I guess he saw the probe was going to come over since the Mothership Corps cleaned up that Ling and going for the safer third. Starts the Roach Warren, too. Yeah, Snoot giving a lot of respect here to uh, a Kung Fu Panda who he thinks is going to be aggressive. How, how dangerous is this, then? With the three gateways, is this enough for him to put serious pressure on? I mean, speed is so close yeah. to completing. Yeah, it is. It depends if Snoot uh, misreads, get an Zerglings. Again, Snoot is somebody that plays with very little vision. That Overlord at the bottom just saw a probe walking by. It saw the probe just go past. So that's a massive tell right now for Snoot that Kung Fu Panda wants to be aggressive. That's why he's getting 14 Zerglings here, to try and make sure he can shut this down properly. Yeah, plus one attack starts up on that Forge, and no gas is on the natural just yet for Kung Fu Panda either. Oh, I really like the decision of Kung Fu Panda to start sentries at home instead of swapping in Zealots across the map, because now they're going to be building up on energy, and all of those links that were made by Snoot are not going to do anything. Seven Roaches start! Wow. Snoot wants to go for a similar attack here. Like on Coda. That he did on the, on the, on the first map, but yeah. in this case, if Kung Fu Panda stays at home as enough sentries, this time it's really not going to do anything, because he's going to have uh, a Mothership Core as well. Out and, yeah, exactly. He can force field him out and Photon Overcharge. 
Um, I don't think Kung Fu Panda... Oh, he sees the roaches in the yeah, main. This the, is... The Mothership card would need to get home for that, too, though. This is really bad, I feel, right now for Snoot here. That this was spotted. He's uh, now on 37 drones against 43 probes. And Kung Fu Panda is happily going to be starting a robo. Yeah, I mean, everything here is coming up uh, pretty okay for Kung Fu Panda. He can start his Twilight Council reasonably soon as well if he wants to go for a plus two blink follow-up. I guess the biggest thing is that this number of units will delay him being able to take a third base, but... Not the end of the world since so many drones were cut to build these roaches. Yeah. I mean, these units really are not going to do much here. Kung Fu Panda kind of butchers some force fields, but in the end, being able to get two roaches, he's going to be able to chase this away comfortably against speedless roaches there. And the lair just now starting too, as a few zealots get thrown over to the side just in case there's nothing here to defend. And there's, there's not much. Two zealots are across the map. Um, Maybe they should go for drones. It'd be a little annoying. One of them tags the queen, the other one's gonna get at least a drone. So just being annoying in general, not bad at all for Gung Fu Banda. Also forces these links to run home. Gets the queen quite low. Yeah. Behind is gonna be starting a third base. I Kung like Fu that. Panda's got a Twilight Council. I really Next like to that. his forge, by the way, which being, is very important. Yeah, being able to pull those units away actually does help get the third base up too. And the army is really strong now as well with that yeah. robo facility. Twilight Council's done, so what is Based on the, the way that these previous games have gone, I get the impression that he wouldn't mind just building a few immortals, massing up stalkers, and plus two blink pushing. Um, do you like that on this map, or maybe Kung Fu Panda is going to do something else? I, I think with the position Kung Fu Panda is in, it could be one of the, the, one of the very good things that he can do, but to be honest, he's mostly kind of turtled on three bases up until the point he had a lot of stalkers. Whereas, usually, if you get the immortals like this, you start pushing out a lot earlier. So, we'll see. Maybe he makes the adjustments. What about Snoot's build choice, though? He's going straight roaches, plus one range, and roach speed. This is yeah. highly uncharacteristic based on the first two maps. He kind of avoided roaches as much as he could prior. Yeah, Snoot is only getting units here right now. This seems like he's anticipating either to be attacked soon and he wants to be ready, or I guess if he doesn't get attacked, he gets to counterattack, or he gets to attack himself to try and do some damage. And since he has spores, it makes it so much harder for a proto to fly some hallucinated phoenixes in there to properly spot that there's this many roaches. So, Kung Fu Panda moving out right now, like there's a good chance he's gonna be forced into a recalling, in which case behind this, there's gonna be less energy to deal with this many roaches. And actually, tunneling class is a very realistic possibility here as an upgrade that could be started by Snoop to try and yeah. all in behind this with only roaches. Yeah, this is... He's committing everything he's got here to this Snoot. Putting, putting it everything uh, all in line here in the final map of this series. Yeah, this is a really big moment for Snoot as if he drops this map, you can kiss any chances of making it to the global finals goodbye. And he still has a large army he recalled all the way back home, so these roaches aren't going to be oh, able to go for sort of base trade. This is something that we've seen Stolar do very recently. Uh, when he played against SOS at the MSI tournament in Seattle, and uh, he was able to pull it off somehow on this map. I guess the fact that SOS had gone for the gold base really helped, but in this case, this is still very scary. If you look at the army supply, it's more than double here for Snoot right now. Yeah, there's a lot of roaches and zerglings coming in, trying to crack this base open, pushing the natural as well, but a good force field. Those cannons and the immortal finishing up, really helping to hold this defense together. The force fields are doing the job so far. The Nexus still has a lot of energy, excuse me, a lot of hit oh, points Oh, the immortal left. got sniped around the natural, and Snoot's really trying to knock down that wall here. Yeah, another to immortal try and get in there, but his supply is plummeting. Another immortal is about to finish. He's getting a few more cannons in. He's doing everything he can. You can see Snoot, the stress, trying to make it through, trying to get in here. His life is on the line for the World Championship Series. He gets on top of the immortal and the natural. Wow. He cleans it up. There's still roaches at the third base. He's forcing Uncle Banner to bring everything back towards the natural expansion. He still has an immortal uh, to hold this one down. The uh, burrow and burrow move are not yet complete. If he gets the robot facility, no more immortals. There is an observer. He'll have detection for the burrow, but if these roaches can spread themselves out, life's going to get really difficult really quickly. He's about to get burrow here, but Snoot has lost pretty much all of his these roaches already more and more are going to be sent towards the third base there as those in the main. They can no burrow and there is only one observer on the observer? map right now and it's in the natural doing absolutely nothing, Nate. Snoot, this is all in. He needs to make this work right now or he's dead. Yeah, he immediately starts more cannons at the third base trying to defend against this. He's got his stalkers in the main. Now the observer is here. He can clean these roaches up. He can pick them off of his main. He can pick them off of the third base soon too. What, what does Snoot do? Uh, he looks like he wants to transition. Which, transitioning out of this is going to be so hard. I guess the fact that he killed a robo is definitely going to help. But trying to get a few and few more probes here, if he can, in the natural of his opponent. Kung Fu Banna lost a bunch of probes, but not that many. Man, yeah, he lost seven in total only. Oh my gets god. Gets the queen in the main. These zealots are going to go try to pick off a few of these drones. And 
A very tense moment. You do not want to be making workers when your opponent is getting ready to push you. These Zealots, they killed almost as much as something like a maxed out Roach army <laughs> in terms of economy <laughs> as a payback, Nate. And yeah, Hydralis then starts up. The Spire, the Infestation pen. I mean, just laying it all down. Proof of Panda is in a fantastic position from there. All he has to do is get more and more Stalkers, and when he reaches a critical mass that he's happy with, he's going to be able to move across the map to try and close this out against the Snoot, who's going to be very low on army supply himself. Yeah, this is a big, big moment. The question, I guess, at this point is, when does Gung Fu Banda move out? Because if you know, the sooner he goes, the less possible tech that he has to play against, since all these other units need upgrades. Yeah, when does Gateways finish? You see, he just started a bunch of Gateways in the main. He's getting a bunch of additional pylons. Four gates went down in the main here. So Kung Fu Panda is going to go up to, I think that is 11 Gateways in total. And he starts to push a star gates. I guess he spotted okay. the, the Spire and it he wants to make sure he can get Phoenixes. A bit paranoid, I'd suppose, at this point. He does have that War Prism still in the main base. Yeah. A lot of Zealots actually getting God, these War Prisms. He jumps on top of an Immortal and does not even kill it. Snoot is so far out of position here against this War Prism, but uh, a bunch of Hydra is coming out at the right time are really going to help him defending against this. It's so funny how he spots the, the Spire and starts two star gates against the Snoot, who's right now getting Hydra Discs, taking two Hive and probably aiming to go for Vipers. Yeah, this is really, really uncomfortable. Oh, we could have a base raid. He just lost so many roaches trying to dive that immortal in the counter attack. He's going to move in. There's three cannons, four cannons here. He's got stalkers oh as God. well. This is looking great for Kung Fu Panda. He's got such a massive army out on the map that he's going to be attacking with. And back at home with the photon of a charge, plus all of these units and cannons, he should be fine. Yeah, Mothership Core is going to come over, approaching this base. There's the overcharge. One photon cannon remains. And I mean, picking that off Burrow would be nice, but there's just so much Protoss here. The force fields are dropping. The Guardian Shields are ready. The War Prism is here to reinforce. And he can also blink his defensive way to take this map, to take this series and eliminate Snoot from the World Championship Series, possibly denying him any chance at making it to BlizzCon here. Gung Fu Banda seems to have done it, killing all of the drones of Snoot outside this third base. The Hydras, the Lynx, streaming in, but there's not enough to stop this torrent of Protoss trying to snipe the War Prism, but at the same time, we'll lose every last force. GG, Gung Fu Banda is going to the quarterfinals. A fantastic haul here by Kung Fu Panda, who somehow spotted this on time to start a bunch of cannons, set up defensively, and make sure it didn't take too much damage here against the massive amount of roaches of Snoot. And in the end, quite able to hold and then do well, just I guess with the follow-up uh, attack that he was good to go for, in which case Snoot tried to buy some time, but that was just, I guess, a little bit too, uh, a little bit too late to try and buy some time because Kung Fu Panda just has the massive critical mass of stalkers that he needed to go across the map and close the deal with. Yeah, and it was just good decision making too with the number of cannons that he got to defend the natural while that big push came in because he split his forces, I thought, very well. Most of the army was at the third base ready to hold that down. But having all those cannons at the natural with just a few sentries and the immortal bought him enough time to clean up the third, move down, and he didn't, he didn't lose, as you said, any economy. He killed as much Nate, as the two zealots did. You predicted Kung Fu Panda to win. What's your secret at this point? Oh. What's going on? I don't know. Just trusting my instincts. <laughs> when you, it's uh, it's it's hard to let your secrets go when you're this good, Todd. All right, fair enough. Yeah, but uh, we are going to hear now from the boys in the analyst desk, and I believe Gung Fu Banda himself. That's right. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Joined by Gung Fu Panda. Congratulations, you've made the quarterfinals. Um, I heard and saw the, your big clap at the end and massive grins. It's a fantastic victory for you. you must be over the moon. Yeah. I'm really happy. I can't believe it still. Like, I didn't expect to win against Snoot because he's so good. And yeah. I mean, coming into the series against Snoot, talk to us about your, your, mental, your mentality, your match preparation. You obviously knew it was going to be a difficult match, but you must have had some confidence inside. Yeah, like Snoot had um, a down phase like, where he wasn't that good, but like three weeks ago he came back on the top. Like, he really became really good again. And I was actually really scared because he's pretty good in PvC, like even without a swarm host. And so I'm quite happy that I, I could defend this everything. Back-to-back uh, -back season finals and, you, and you've gone one step further now. Unfortunately, you fell short against Bunny in a very close series 2-1. You've now kind of overcome that. 
did you think about or during the series or before the series against Snoop, did you think back to season two finals at all? Because you were almost in the exact same position. Mm, yeah, like, <clears throat> I hope just that I win. Like, um, last season was very close and I should have won, in my opinion. And it's a little bit a revenge, like, for <laughs> Bunny. Like, he beat me last time and this time I beat Snoot, so some oh, wow. liquid, liquid revenge. Going after Team Liquid then, huh? <laughs> 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 In control? I think mean, it was just a good performance, a, a big upset, and even you kind of were talking about it being an upset, so I think that's pretty cool. We've seen a lot of PVZ from you. Um, just a second, they're yelling in my ear. It's really hard to talk to you about. Uh, we've seen a lot of PVZ from you, but we haven't seen the other matchups. Do you have more confidence in the other matchups? Do these other guys need to look out for you, or how do you feel about going into the round of eight? Um, I think at the moment I'm quite okay in every matchup, but like you know, maybe PvP is my best. Okay. Um, but unluckily, uh, not the most protos are al already gone, so I'm looking forward to get on Zerg at least again. Okay. I mean, looking at the the players, so you've gone through in second place. The other first place players you could play against: Zanster, Lilbo, and Pult. Uh, very difficult players, obviously. So it's it's Zanster, the one that you hope and cross fingers for in the quarterfinals. Um, I would say Lilbo and Sansa, like Lilbo as well. I mean, you've already yeah beaten him. So He's a PvP sniper, man. That's he right. That that would be epic, wouldn't it? Snoot and then Lilbo next. You'd be in an epic roll through. Well, um, we are going to in a, in a couple of moments here uh, go through. Game two and game three, uh, just to get a couple of thoughts of you. But uh, before that's ready, in control, uh, what are your thoughts on these performances throughout the day today? Oh, we've been really lucky with just having really good games and some upsets. Let's be honest with ourselves here, yeah. too. We've actually seen Marine Lord and Snoot kind of summarily removed from WCS. Uh, Jadong's going to be terrified. It's like everyone that has a <laughs> chance at BlizzCon, these... These young guns are like, nah, we don't want to kill <laughs> Nah, all Koreans, please. No, no thanks. <laughs> uh, let, let's jump into uh, game number two now. So uh, this moment here, I want you to talk through what was going through your mind and the rest from on. Um, from this moment on, I saw it. I was very far behind. Like, he had um, this um, great aspire. He had uh, Ultralisk, like, and I didn't have the answer yet to... Um, Lords. He left that warp prism. One hit. Yeah, like I realized. One hit. I realized it, and that I like. I think this warp prism won me the game. Basically, mm. like I killed a spire, great spire, and without the great spire, he couldn't make it warp uh, Brad Lords, So without this, I would lost. But luckily, yeah, you played so very good on this map. To be honest, like this was very very good from you. Um, we can move forward into to game number three now. I want to get your, your thought process on this moment. So before we play it, this is the attack that Snoop built up. You obviously realized it very shortly, if not already. What were you thinking when this was happening? Because we actually caught your face on screen while this is going on, and it was pretty intense. <laughs> well, how did I look like there? <laughs> well, you, you were staring, and you, your face was a little crunched up. Um, but obviously a, a very stressful situation, right? There's roaches, lings on absolutely everywhere. You're trying to defend in multiple locations. Yeah. Like, it's very hard to control in multiple locations. Um, luckily, um, I did the baguette style, but with a very early robo. And I had a model, an observer. Like, I felt pretty safe uh, at this stage. Um, <coughs> like, if he would have a s um, the movement speed on mm -hmm. the ground. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't remember. Telling claws. You know. Uh, yes. Okay, now. Uh, <laughs> sorry, my chairman. <laughs> um, I mean, 60 supply difference uh, at this moment, and you, your force was a great. You cut him up really nicely. Were you starting to get worried, or were you confident at this moment? Um, I was pretty confident. Like, he didn't kill, like, nothing. Like, he didn't kill a lot of workers, or just didn't kill a lot of armies. So, and, like, you know, the blink stalkers, if yep. they get much, like, more, um, you're getting a good position. And you had that pylon at the fourth base too, so you kind of—I think you knew. Yeah, and the warp yeah. prism in the main as well. If you hold this off, you're in good shape. Yeah, you got two brilliant counterattack positions here. But at this moment, I was a very a little bit worried um, because, like, he killed some workers. Now I don't have a robo anymore. Like, he can outplay me with uh, tunneling gloss, and yeah. But 
But once you started to stabilize, you started to realize what was going on, and this was yeah. the, you, you were driving the car rather yeah. than being a passenger. After like I saw the spire, I actually saw that he uh, wants to go for Mutas and base straight. Yeah. Like that's why I made the double stargate, and then I found out that he's making hydras, and I think like <clears throat> he can't have enough units mm -hmm. because he invested so much in the attack. And because of that, I just attacked, yeah. force field it, and won. And uh, w at what point did you think you'd won this game? Uh, or, you know, for sure? Because a lot of StarCraft players start to realize before the game's actually over that this is this is yours. Did you think at this point, after this fight? Um, I sucked after I... The drones, probably? Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's like, what you know. No right, well, drones, uh, no army, uh, no army, lose, like, it's simple. Okay, thank you very much, Kung Fu Panda, for uh, uh, taking a couple of moments here to, to walk through the replays with us. It's uh, um, a great feat you've achieved now, the first time in the quarterfinals. We wish you the best of luck in Krakow. You're going to be traveling there tomorrow with the other players that have qualified. Um, let's take a quick look at the bracket now to confirm we finished up with Group B. In first place, it is Petraeus. In second, it is the German Kung Fu Panda, who eliminates Snoot and moves through, stealing second place for his own. And a, a wonderful performance from the from the young lad today. The games against Sen and the games against Snoot. Joining us back on the desk now is Rotterdam. Uh, I mean, talk to us, Kev, about how well Kung Fu Panda really played today. He showed up when he needed to. Absolutely. That was a great series, especially that second game on Dash Terminal. It's a map we don't see very often. But this is why I think sometimes it's good to think it's outside of the box. When you play maps like Iron Fortress over and over again, Iron Fortress is it's doable, but it's just a very good Zerg map. And I wouldn't want to play against Snoot on Iron Fortress. Why would you want to give Snoot the comfort of playing on Iron Fortress? So just be like, all right, let's go with Dash Terminal. May not be the best Protoss map ever out there, but at least it's not Iron Fortress, the map that Snoot probably plays 50 times a week. Now, I was wrong earlier. I told I told Rotterdam that the hallucinated or the Oracle was killing hallucinated clauses. I was wrong, but I think actually Snoot picked Dash and Terminal. Yeah, but I mean, that's like the order, right? Like the, uh, okay. the thing is, most of the time the Protoss will veto Dash Terminal, but mm -hmm. this time he didn't. He allowed it through. I yeah. see what you're saying. So okay, that's gotcha. the main one. Like the order is kind of irrelevant. It's in the map pool. No, that's it's a good of. point. And I, and to kind of feed off of his good point is, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of worked out in the sense that a lot of these maps, it's like okay, mono e mono, macro versus macro, and against Snoot, you don't want to do that, especially on Iron Fortress as the example. But Dash and Terminal gets a little bit. I mean, actually, like the comeback was pretty real there. It was because yeah. he defended a lot of those attacks and he sim cityed so damn well, which that map kind of allows for, too. And let's not forget about Coda. This was not like a 2-1 victory where he got absolutely demolished in game one and game two he cheesed his way to victory and game three he had a build order win. No, even the map that he lost, he played pretty damn well. He did so many things right from start to finish. He got very close. At a certain point, we kind of all thought, like, I think he has it and then he didn't have it. But overall, just a very good series and I think a deserved winner. Yeah, yeah, very deserved, very well deserved win. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's now time to start to get ready to enter the second half of the day. We started today with five players who could play at the global finals. Unfortunately, we've lost two now in Marine Lord and Snoot. When we go into Group C, the champion, the reigning champion, comes to play as he takes on Violet. <laughs> 